everyone. This is Mike Shack 95 along with my cohort. Yeah. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Perfect joker. Our other cohort is asleep in front of us. Right over there. <laughs> yeah. Actually. We have continued our little weird adventure of the Alien and Predator series going on with one of my personal favorites, Alien Covenant. Now, before we get into our thoughts on to the movie, I will cover the budget, box office, and critic uh, reviews and whatnot. The film itself had a production budget of $97 million. <laughs> and the box office they got back was $240.9 million. But, they still, from what I've read in articles over the years, they still call that a box office bomb. Because critics rated it a 6.5, and audience scores it a 5.5. And I have yet, to this day, have figured out why this film gets such a bad rep. It's, it's like Prometheus, but it's not. It's Covenant. It, it confuses me. It doesn't make sense as to what is the original alien in Alien vs. Predator, it's like, oh boy, this thing. But at the same time, I don't know if that was the past, the future, it's very confusing. The crossover okay. films are, are its own universe. Prometheus is like, nope. That's Some why other semi-humans, they, the they engineers. started, yeah, the engineers, they, yeah. they engineered humans, and then somehow the alien was connected to the engineering. The canisters are like the black liquid that they're messing with in mm -hmm. Prometheus. That was created by the engineers as if a way of pretty much wiping out the existence of humans as if, if they wanted to start over or not. Um, I thought it was interesting their decision to make this goop transform and, and mix with the plant life. David and the chick lady went to a planet that looked very much like the originals like the originals had started it which is crazy because why would they create something that's extremely lethal to themselves? Which obviously it was because they all ran from it. Something about these two movies, especially especially whatnot, that I um, understand, but at the same time I don't get. It's just that I feel like like the casual, the casual moviegoer that just goes and watch movies just for the shits and giggles and doesn't really pay attention to what's really going on in the story. They just want everything spoon-fed to them. They don't understand the story and they give it a bad rep because they don't understand it. When it's like you need to sit there and actually pay attention to every little detail. Because both of these movies connect... Both these movies answer all the questions. What was the mutated thing that killed the people in the first movie, in Prometheus? That was the the worm. Oh right, it was the worm. It was the worm. I was confused about the androids. I mean, I made the same thing last time. I was like, uh, it's like, wow, he doesn't get cold. Still puts on a coat. Doesn't need a helmet. Puts on a helmet. Well, in this movie, it's like grows hair. It's like I even mentioned to to Mike the if the idea is to keep you know him accustomed humans ourselves, when we see somebody with hair longer or shorter, we ourselves have to pause and be like, well, that person looks slightly different. Well, that person has new glasses or, you know, they're wearing a different style clothing. Like, I mean, if you have a friend who always wears a specific kind of clothing, shorts or coats or glasses or funny looking hats, if they all of a sudden stop wearing that, it starts to mess with you. And so to see an android that slowly grows hair, I feel would be weirder than if he's just like, Hi, this is my head. Like I said before I turned the camera on, like if, if I were to explain that whole thing, it would take me probably at least two hours to read it. And, yeah, I, and it's no. My big question is, if I was to go to the internet, would it be you know, what the fans have come up with or what the writers originally meant? Because if it was anything but the writers originally meant, it's bukkake, and there's no point in having it. Well, there's probably more into, into it, because the, the movies don't really go too far into it, except for like, oh, it's because they just want the androids to be more so like the, the humans. Yeah. So but do the androids come from somewhere else? The androids are created by... No, I mean somewhere else in the story. Or was the androids specifically for these two movies? The androids are always involved in the Alien franchise. It's just... This is kind of, I, I guess, an origin, quote unquote. Obviously, for the sake of story, but does it make any sense? David was able to give himself the same cut and the same wounds 
as Walter in the amount of time it took the the, 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 the last two people to run from the temple to the ship. And he was also able to run from the temple to the ship. Don't let the bed bugs bite. One, one cool thing I noticed, I and it's a little tiny small thing, and it's just like a filming choice they did. So it was after David did the swap, and when uh, Tennessee was like, "Hey, Walter, go bring her in," and like Walter, like, and like David's walking up behind her and whatnot, and he has the hood down, and then he go when he goes to put his hand on her shoulder, when he touches her, she turns around, and then when she turns around, the wind blows the hood up, and like that's how we kind of first met Walter was with his hood up and everything, and she kind of looks at him like, "Oh, go, it's you," and then she turns back, and the wind blows it back down. It's kind of like, oh, to her. It, to, to, to her point of view that's she's thinking it's Walter and that's like them perceiving that they think it's Walter but to us when she's not looking at, at him we know that it's actually David the time scale is just quite interesting that you know he made this perfect thing but he's waiting you know he's killed all of the things that we were required to do this thing I mean he did send out the beacon but how would he know that there was going to be anyone anywhere close? There's not humans just like, oh, humans well, everywhere roaming around. Here's the here's the thing. Um, and this is where I said that there's, there's one thing about this movie that is irritating as fuck with me. And it was, it, I, I mentioned it during the scene where he's like taking out all the engineers with all the black, uh, pretty much mass extinctioning them. Look on my works, you mighty, and despair. So, that scene is in another little short that the producers of this film decided to release. They released a six minute <coughs> like a prologue out like is it to on this movie or is it like a two it's, minute trailer? It's to this movie and it was like a six minute prologue that they shared in theaters and they put it on um, YouTube and everything. Can we watch it? But they didn't when I, first time I watched this, they didn't. Can there be a link in the description? Yes, there'll be a link in the description. Link in but the description. here's my problem. Here's my problem about it. When I went to go watch this in theaters for the first time, they didn't show it. So if I did not go on the internet beforehand and saw that six minute clip, I would have probably been ten times more confused as to what was going on because that that was not at the beginning of the experience of the movie. And I wish that they would just attach it. To the movie, so that way it would Welcome. just make sense. And that's not the movie trailer; that's just the prologue. It has its own separate movie trailer too. It's just why would you not put that prologue there? I know it adds like another six and minutes. So I've not seen it, so this is the confusion. We might add a little tidbit in the next movie. It kind of trailer. Pretty much what it does is it kind of explains like what David and Elizabeth were doing. How like how did he get his body back together in one piece and them kind of conversating and kind of like their journey to um, the engineer's planet because that's where they were wanting to go at the end of the first film was the engineer planet which is mm -hmm. this one right here and then it carries on to him saying okay well we're going to be there in such and such time he puts her in cryo sleep and then something happens I guess something she's in cryo sleep he goes to the dropping bay of all the, the black goo mass extinction and then yeah, that's where it ends for that. So we're assuming he experimented on her and whoever was left. Whenever like he got landed, that's when he started experimenting on her and all the other shit. Because he obviously had some extra stuff, so it didn't kill all life forms, but it definitely started mutating some, which is interesting because the black goop killed, but did it also mutate? Mm. It killed the um, engineers because it that one guy drank it in the beginning of Prometheus and he pretty much died in seconds. But I guess with humans, it also can slowly kill them too. This alien, the one that, that spawns in this one, it seems like there's only one. There's the one that dies. two xenomorphs and one and two neomorphs. It's really cool to see the xenomorph vision. I mean, because we always hear about predator vision. Oh, predator yeah. vision that was predator really vision cool. That, right? predator vision I like that a lot. Movies. Well, the alien vision, this is really cool. It was really weird. You know, a buck like. The cinematography. Yeah, cinematography is good. Oh. Dialogue's good. Story's good. The scenes are good. Mm -hmm. So, the dark eeriness of everything, the robotechy on the spaceship, the guy burning alive at the very beginning of the movie. James Franco. Yeah, the fact that it's James Franco almost makes it cheesy. And so it's hard to, everybody's crying. I wish they would have put somebody else in there. It's kind of a shitty thing to do, but I feel like they casted him in the movie 
just to make people think, oh, he's James Franco. He's gonna make. He's gonna be a big part of the film or whatever. And they come see the movie and they're like, exactly. fuck, he's dead. Exactly. I haven't like been. I haven't like watched it like over and over and over again so many times. I've, I mean, I watch it every now and then. I think that's why I love it so much. Is but because it, can I don't watch it a thousand times. Would you oh. consider this watchable? Yes. <laughs> I answered that question three times already, and you keep asking it. No, you yes. just said I watched Stop. it four times. I thought it was very weird, very cool, but very weird when it first popped out. It wasn't like, Mah! like what you'd expect to see. Mm-hmm. Mah! It was like, mother, do you love me? David's weird edginess and his psycho communicating babble back and forth and stuff added to the already mysteriousness and kookiness of the whole thing and that, that twist at the very end, you know, obviously... You can see it a mile away, yeah, but it's still it's still it. just kind of like, oh, it's, shit. But I'm going to go out on the limb it. that the actor Michael Fassbender, who plays David and plays Walter in these films, I think he fucking makes the movie sometimes mm-hmm. because he sells the part so well. And just, don't just get a, this isn't just my going, I love this guy, he's cool, so this movie's cool because he's in it. This is, this guy actually does a good job uh, of portraying these characters. Oh yeah, he's really good at like playing these characters and whatnot. Well, and the fact that he's a, in fact that he's like one of the very few actors that can like play two characters and he, talk to he himself. He literally plays two characters, but even the way he looks, I don't know if that's editing post or the way he does stuff. But when he has David, he almost has like this like energetic spark and youngness mm-hmm. to him. When he plays Walter, he's like, I am an android. I do my job. Leave me alone. <laughs> pat, 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 pat. And David's like, I can play the, the flute and the whistle. There's just a lot of the thought process in this film, too, like about creation and whatnot. It's a lot of like biblical stuff, but well, it's, a it's lot of, very A lot of spiritual mumbo It's not necessarily... It's intriguing to like going to this film theological like for like me like I, go, I went into this film going and saying okay this is going to be an alien movie but I was also kind of going in open minded and kind of thinking more of like how like the creation and all that and whatnot. Yeah, and I'm just like this is creation movie. this is a very interesting take on a movie and... but I, I like it <laughs> I do have one more note, and it's talking about the sequel and whatnot, and I've been really, really fucking worried about the Alien franchise since the whole thing with Disney. Uh, It says, here I found at at the 2019 CinemaCon, it was stated that after the acquisition of 21st Century Fox, Disney will continue to create new stories in the Alien series. As of May of 2019, Variety reported that another prequel, prequel sequel to this trilogy here um, was reportedly in the script phase with Ridley Ridley Scott attached direct. In September of last year, Scott confirmed that a new Alien film was in development, but as of August of this year, which was actually several months ago, a news report concluded that a sequel is currently uncertain. And I'm just like, can we just get another Alien movie? So we can... So we can we have so, enough Alien movies? No, no. Like, so we can finally connect... Yes, this we, we can connect movie. this series to the an- original anthology because they need one more movie to connect the original anthology with this trilogy to make it what feel we complete. Just connect it with the Schwarzenegger Predator series. No, that's its own thing. Are Anyways, we, are we gonna reviews. Give this a rating of thumbs up or thumb down, or are we gonna go numbers? Go numbers. I gotta get my numbers paper. So in the meantime, he gonna speak. Like I gotta say, this is one of my very, very favorite movies like ever. It's probably I probably put it in my top ten of favorite movies. Um, probably one of the movies that I got super hyped for when it first dropped the first trailer on Christmas morning <laughs> when it came out. Um, I think my review, I think my rating for it hasn't really changed. Like, this was my review for it, like, a couple of years ago, wherever it is. I didn't know if everybody got, whenever James Franco, they shot 8.9. I'm still probably going to say it's at least... At least a nine out of ten for me. I know that sounds really high for like some people, but this One film, direction. this film is, in my opinion, almost perfect. If only they attached that six-minute pr- uh, prologue, they would have done that. This film would have been perfect. Krieger margin would normally be like, I'm gonna give it a seven, but then I can't because that terrible beginning and then that ugly scene and then that weird thing that happened. We're gonna go take it down to like a two. I felt parts. like it was a good film. Um, it was better than I expected it would be. Um, I figured it'd be really 
I, I figured it wouldn't have as many twists as it did, even if people saw them coming, they're still good twists. I was really happy that they that they involved both the the new ones that I don't know anything about and the, and the what, but I can assume stuff about it, so I don't need questions on that and the old ones that they had before. Uh, there's really good high points like uh, whenever they first got to the planet and everything they get, they didn't like rush into them fucking them up but they also didn't go too slow because once they shit started to go it all hit the fan. So uh, I felt like the pacing of this film was really good. Um, so I'm giving it a 8. I would say this is most definitely a 7 so it's worth my time so I would, wouldn't give it anything less than a 7 and I want to call it great but, not to mark it down, not to be too critical, but I did not like the beginning with, uh, insert guy, I can't remember his name. I didn't even know that was James Franco until James Franco. somebody told me right. after the movie, and I'm like, wait, he was in this movie? I didn't even fucking notice. He I didn't even see care. See he was all like, hi, I'm rock climbing. Other than that, I feel like this movie had great dialogue, great story, great cinematography, acting was great in it. I mean, the, the main character, the lady, kind of flat, kind of sad, kind of drab. Not super like, oh, action-packed. Other than that, I feel like this was a really good movie, so I'm not going to give it an 8. Because a, a great, I consider great something that's like emotionally moving and there were some emotionally flat parts in it. It was definitely a thriller. It was definitely interesting. I really liked it, so I think I'm going to give it a 7.75. Almost great, but not great. I don't want to get to like point twos. I'm just going to do stuff either half or by quarter. Mm -hmm. Try to do that. So it's definitely a seven. Worth my time, but it's not quite a great. You know, I've seen this five. film like five times already, and it's and I'm just like. If I watch the beginning seven, the beginning six minute blurb, and then maybe watch it again sometime later, I might. Kick it up to eight, yeah. That was my original plan was to play the six minute prologue and then play the movie, but we yeah. just kind of like Prometheus <laughs> wasn't as confusing to me. I feel like this would have been much better. Oh no, I'm going to close this video out because it is one in the morning and I'm very tired. And we both have work, eight a.m. But uh, sleepy Krieger sleeping away on the couch. Tired, number one. <laughs> And tired number two. And this is Mike Check ninety five, and we will be signing out for the for this film, and we shall see you in the next video. You know they you know they can't hear you scream when you're in space, right?